Hello Internet, I am back from America, here I am, and wow, <laughs> what a time I had over there, you know, I can't believe how well I did, to be honest, uh, you know, top eight in the world, top eight in the world, wow, you know, for how average my season was as well, I did joke with Jamie Boyd, you know, so this is what happens when I don't take Lyped to world, <laughs> you use something maybe a little bit more solid, no, but you know, I can't believe how well the tournament went for me, you know, and, you know, how enjoyable it was as well. I mean, all of you guys who were cheering me, you know, chanting my name, you know, everything, you know, watching the uh, the big screens, you know, thank you so much. You know, you will know who you are. So thank you so much. You know, really some some memories that I'm going to take, you know, with me a, a long way. Um, I hope, you know, unless something horrible happens to my brain, but, you know, hopefully it doesn't. So, um, you know, we're <laughs> so we're, we're going to watch through... Um, the uh, stream games now. So, um, you know, my stream games, this is because I was on stream a few times during the tournament. And um, I, I did sort of watch through my stream games kind of like on a phone in the uh, hotel room, but this is going to be like a proper sort of watch through. So, um, you know, we're going to do it together. Um, I'm going to put the volume up in the moment when we get into the game, um, see what they say about me. Um, I'll give my comments as well. We'll see how this goes. Um, in the next few days, we've got, you know, some more stream games, um, some other stuff sort of planned as well. There is going to be a team report as well. So, um, yeah, there's definitely going to be a team report. So, uh, you know, watch out for that. But looks like we're getting into the game now. So he's really hungry saying. to uh, make it to day two and then do well in the top cut at Worlds because he just hasn't made it that far before. So he's really, really looking forward to add that to his resume. He's always a player to watch. At yeah, the talking about Kamal at the moment. Unfortunately for him, you know, he's never really been able to kind of make that top placing, right? You right. Know, Barry Anderson back in 2013 was able to make it all the way to the top 16 of the World Championships uh, tournament that you were actually a part of as well. And I believe Kamal was also a part of that tournament as well. So, you know, Barry did finish ahead of Kamal in that respect. But, you know, this is a clash of titans right now. This is a clash of two very experienced players in the community. Right? Yeah, the and two very well-liked players. Uh, Kamal, he's one of those players who's kind of known as your favorite player's favorite player because everybody knows Kamal who's been around for a long time. Everybody's played against him. He's such a good player. He makes some on-point predictions a lot of times. Uh, and everybody cheers for him to kind of get that first big finish that he's always wanted in. Okay, so uh, on Team Preview, um, well, actually, <laughs> that's my team. But on Team Preview, um, I recognize the team. He was using just the team that uh, won the Japan Nationals team. And, you know, if you've been, you know, following my YouTube channel for, uh, you know, for a few months now, then you will know that I was one of the first that, you know, used that team and became familiar with it, you know, before it even won Japan Nationals. So, you know, I know it's a life of Rayquaza. I know it's a choice banded tunnel claim. Um, you know, all the rest of it. Uh, I don't think he would made any changes. Obviously, I was going to be wary. I didn't want to just sort of assume everything straight away, but, you know, because it could have made some changes. But uh, I was feeling quite comfortable because I knew who the, uh, how the team worked, and I had played against it on Showdown a few times as well, and I felt like I did have a, a pretty good matchup against it as well. So uh, this is the first time the stream actually saw um, my team. Uh, this is at uh, 3-0, actually, as well. This is Swiss Round 4, so... Um, Three, I don't think um, I played on, I think like I was on one of the TVs at the side, but um, this is the first like stream game that I was on, so this is the first time people have actually saw what I was using, but uh, yeah, I felt pretty good going into the match, so let's see what they're saying. Clear smog, it's a way to force Xerneas out, get rid of those boosts that it gets from Geomancy. Yeah, Ray identifying what uh, what um, the Volcarona does, I'm pretty sure he did actually say, um, as I would sort of muted it then, that, um, you know, it could hold a red card uh, and it can whirlwind as well. And um, <laughs> I was thinking, how did he know that? You know, he must have had like a, a team sheet of, uh, you know, all my, uh, my Pokemon. But uh, <laughs> good on him. Here we go. You know, it's more of a Xerneas counter. It's not something you're going to want to bring against the likes of a Groudon, which you're not going to be able to hit very hard. Or even a Rayquaza. Rayquaza. Definitely not going to bring it against that. As we do see leads come out right now, as we do see... Yeah, I wouldn't want Volcarona here, unfortunately. For, uh, Barry side. Yeah, Barry side does go for the Xerneas and the, uh, Smeargle. And we do see Kamal go with the Groudon and Smeargle. Yep, so we see matching Smeargles here. This will be really interesting to see. Uh, the speeds of each is important if they both go for a Dark Void. Of course, it's also important if they go for Fake Outs, if they have that. Uh, and it's also important when it comes to predictions if they have Crafty Shield, because Crafty Shield will block the effects of Dark Void. Um, and 
Yeah, um, just jumping in here, uh, because I did know this team very well, um, and I was a little bit surprised that it did win the uh, Japan Nationals, just because I felt that it was actually quite weak to Smurgle and Xerneas. So, you know, I didn't see any reason why I wouldn't just lead with Smurgle and Xerneas, because I know that, okay, the Rayquaza could maybe be a, a problem, uh, Life Orb Extreme Speed could probably just take the Smurgle out straight away, so that could have been something to worry about, but... Um, I know that the Groudon is special, and as soon as I get my Geomancy up, it can't really touch me for too much as well. The Smurgle could have potentially been a problem. Um, he could, I mean, obviously Smurgle is so versatile, he could have put anything on his Smurgle. So uh, I didn't know if it could have had, or would have had Crafty Shield. Um, I don't think he would have changed its item though, because on the original team it was Focus Sash. So I did want to uh, sort of play like it was Focus Sash uh, at this point. And you don't want to be the one... Uh, having to waste your turn of Smeargle going for a Crafty Shield, you want to, you know, actually get something done with it. However, if both Smeargles were to just not get anything done because of, let's say, Crafty Shields or Dark Void and Crafty Shield, the Groudon has the advantage against the Xerneas, so Ooh. if you're Kamal, you like this situation. We do see Smeargle on Barry's side go for the fake out onto Kamal Smeargle as Groudon on Kamal's side does protect, and Xerneas now gets a free Geomancy here. Gonna be able to exert a lot of pressure as its stats gonna get boosted in special attack, special defense, and speed. So the move that a lot of players do not enjoy seeing coming from that Xerneas comes out on turn one relatively free. Yeah, I didn't see any reason why I shouldn't do that. Um, going for the fake out on his Smeargle, unless his Smeargle, I mean, I don't think it has fake out anyway, but unless his Smeargle was, ch you know, choice scarfed in whatever way, I was getting the fake out onto it, which does break its Sash, which means, um, you know, seeing as Xerneas is the only thing that can actually do damage on the field for me right now, which means I can just knock it out in one hit. If I didn't break its Sash, then I wouldn't have been able to, you know, I would have had to have eaten a Dark Void, basically, so I had to do that. Um, I did just leave the um, Groud on there too, because... Um, you know, if it does erupt, um, okay, I'm in the sun, but I would be at plus two. I would lose my Smurgle, but I would get so much momentum from that. I'd be able to bring Rayquaza in, I'd be able to Swords Dance up, I'd be able to Dazzle and Gleam on Moonblast. Uh, I would get the momentum, so even if he did erupt and knock my Smurgle out, it wasn't going to be a problem for me. Yeah, definitely good for Barry getting that early Geomancy. And we do see Smurgle's accuracy rise on Kamal's side, and we do see the speed drop, unfortunately. And Smeargle on Barry's side is not going to be moody. It is going to go ahead and either have own tempo or a uh, technician, but most likely that own tempo. Yeah, it is interesting. Just as an interesting point, um, at no point in this tournament did anyone use Swagger or Teeter Dance on my Smeargle. So actually, technician would have been the better ability, just to get a little bit more damage from Fake Out. Interesting, though, uh, to see that Barry Smeargle is fat, or. I guess he doesn't know for sure, but the Smeargle is slower than Xerneas, uh, and so that speed drop's not really a big deal. Um, and we see a switch out from Barry Smeargle, and we do see Rayquaza come in, gonna go ahead and provide the airlock to prevent that sun from coming out. Smeargle does go for a wide guard on Kamal's side, gonna protect from any possibly any possible dazzling, dazzling gleams. As we see Moonblast from Xerneas connect onto that Smeargle, gonna be able to pick up the one-hit KO after a little bit of chip damage from that fake out as Groudon now does get to move and goes for an eruption here. Gonna be weakened because of that airlock. Xerneas with increased special defense, not taking much at all, and Rayquaza of course resisting that, so good turn right there from Barry. Yeah, that was that was a fantastic turn. I couldn't have, you know, hoped for it to go any better really. Um, I did know that the Smurgle had wide guard. Um, I mean, you know, again, I'm just assuming from the, the Japanese Nationals team. And I did think that it was a prime turn for him to go for it there. Uh, I did want to Moonblast into the Smurgle and not the Groudon. Uh, just because it was moody, I didn't want to leave it on the field and maybe get an evasion boost or, you know, get some kind of RNG like that. Bringing in the Rayquaza as well allowed me to just take the eruption even better because it gets rid of the sun. So, fantastic turn. Okay, I've broken my Sash on the Rayquaza, but Xerneas has taken even less damage now. So it's definitely, you know, nowhere near Life Orb Extreme Speed range. So, really happy with how that turn went. Yeah, this is a situation where you really want a physical uh, Groudon to take on Xerneas, because special Groudons, even though it resists Fairy, it doesn't really have a great matchup against Xerneas, because it got the Geomancy boost. Uh, it's hardly taking any damage here. The one saving grace for Kamal is if his Groudon does have a Hidden Power Ice, which is certainly uh, something we have seen in the past. Um, that could be a way to take out Rayquaza that maybe Barry doesn't expect. Um, and bringing in Talonflame here, that may be able to take out Rayquaza depending on its item. If it's got a choice band, that could certainly be enough to knock it out. And then of course Xerneas uh, having a physical attack like Brave Bird would do massive damage to it.
Yeah, but I don't think it's in range to be KO'd just yet, right? Yeah, I don't know about Xerneas. Uh, it depends how the Xerneas is trained, and it depends on Talonflame's item. Uh, I think it could definitely take out Rayquaza from this point if it's got the likes of a Choice Band or a Life Orb. I think it might be enough. And we do see Rayquaza now. Mega Evolve gonna get rid of that, uh, the Drought, the the Heavy Sun, as we do see Rayquaza's Delta Stream gonna go ahead and bring up the Mysterious Air Current as Xerneas gonna protect itself, not gonna wanna take a Brave Bird this turn. Maybe that's a good protect as Talonflame does go for a Brave Bird into the Protect. Good protect right there as Rayquaza on Barry side goes for the huge Dragon Ascent. Gonna go ahead and it looks like it's gonna target down that Talonflame. Just gonna try to knock it out right now. It does pick up the one hit KO as it does drop its defense and special defense by one stage, but that's the knockout that Barry really wanted just to protect his Xerneas. Yeah, Talonflame had a great matchup against Xerneas there. And whenever we do see the Hidden Power. Yeah, the Hidden Power Ice, unfortunately, the Mysterious Air Current will reduce but that. But it did lower its special defense, so that's going to be enough to take it out because of that uh, Dragon Ascent. That so is, yeah, good call right there, Ray, for that Hidden Power. Yeah, that was an interesting turn. Um, it was potentially a little bit risky to protect my uh, Xerneas there, but I just thought he had to basically Brave Bird into the Xerneas. Um, because I was, again, heavily suspecting the Talonflame was Choice Banded, it's not going to have Protect or anything like that, so just protect the Xerneas, knock it out with a Dragon Ascent. Um, I did expect him to have Hidden Power Ice, you know, the, the original team did have Hidden Power Ice. I didn't actually expect it to knock me out from there, but... Um, I really didn't mind that too much, just because I know that this is a full special Groudon, and I've got my Geomancy up, it does not threaten my, my Xerneas at all, so as long as I got rid of the Talonflame, that was the big threat, and I'm, I'm good to go, basically. Uh, we do have Xerneas still out on the field with the Yeah, so that's a downside. Stages. The bright side for Kamal is he just traded his Talonflame effectively for a Rayquaza, which is certainly a good trade, a non-restricted for a restricted, but you still have this Xerneas here, and you lost one of your big ways to knock it out. Ooh, and we do see Rayquaza. Uh, if Kamal's Rayquaza does carry a Focus Sash and is able to, you know, kind of bypass this mural, this could open up some opportunities because... Yeah, I didn't feel too bad about this because I, I pretty much knew that the Smurgle was was Focus Sash and his Rayquaza was Life Orb. So as long as I just got a Dazzling Gleam or a Moonblast or whatever, any attack from Xerneas, and it was just going to go down there, so... I wasn't too worried here. It will be able to hit Xerneas with the Dragon Ascent, possibly, if it has Focus Sash. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how Barry Smeargle is trained or what item it has. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with Smeargle, as we said before. Uh, normally, we see things like Mental Orb or Focus Sash, but even Choice Scarf is sometimes used, and if it were, uh, it would give Smeargle a way to outspeed both of these Pokemon and put them both to sleep. Uh, probably unlikely, though, we don't see Choice Scarf a whole lot on Smeargle. Um, so another possibility, we saw Fake Out already, so that's definitely something uh, we might see from Barry. And we do see Kamal's, uh, we do see Kamal's Rayquaza now Mega Evolve as well, gonna go ahead and bring out the Mysterious Air Current yet again. That's the uh, weather that they enjoy facing off in. Uh, it's gonna come down to whether or not this Rayquaza can survive the Xerneas and pick up KO. As Rayquaza now goes for an extreme speed here, gonna go ahead and target down this Smeargle, doing a lot of damage, picks up the wow. one-hit KO, so it's not carrying a Focus Sash at all. As we do see a Life Orb come out, uh, that will not help in this matchup against Xerneas at all. We do see the Dazzling Gleam connect onto Rayquaza, picks up the one-hit KO as Groudon hangs on with about 50% right here, but, you know, it's a special Groudon. It's not gonna be able to do much damage at all. No, it's not. As we do see the eruption from Groudon now connect onto that Xerneas, uh, weakened, no sunlight, with a very bulky Xerneas on the other side does yeah, <laughs> bulky because I'm at plus two. Uh, I have, I mean, you know, spreads obviously coming in the future. I've got some bulk in this Xerneas as well. But um, yeah, I, I, I didn't mind just letting Smurgle go down there because I, I'm pretty sure with my Smurgle, I was using Transform on my own Xerneas. So if he didn't extremely speed my Smurgle there, I was going to have two plus two Xerneas. So, you know, I'm pretty sure the game was over at that point. There's not really anything that he could have done unless, unless maybe a... Uh, a critical hit from his eruption might have knocked me out, but there was no sun, you know, he's been damaged a bit as well, so I'm not sure even if that would have knocked me out, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty safe. Barely any damage at all. Yeah, and that was even a single target eruption too, so it just shows Special Groudon just can't really deal with this Geomancy Xerneas at all. Yeah, and that's one thing that Kamal's probably kind of going to have to go back to the drawing board for. You know, the score does look pretty close. It looks like it will finish off in 2-0 fashion, unless Kamal just forfeits for a 2-1 fashion. Uh, we do see Protect just going to go ahead and try to scout out what moves this Crafty is going to be able to have. Yep, you always want to do that uh, in game one. Try and get as much information as you can. 
as we do see Groudon protect, as we do see Scrafty go for the fake out, and we see Xerneas Moonblast into that protect. So, you know, one thing that Kamal's gonna have to go back to do is just be able to prevent this Xerneas from getting up that Geomancy for free. Yeah, since Kamal has that special Groudon instead of the physical Groudon, it makes Xerneas such a big... Yeah, like Ray is just, just saying. Um, and this is one of the problems I find with the team as well. Using special Groudon, it's a massive... Uh, you know, Xerneas is a massive problem because you just can't really hit it when it gets its Geomancy up. Um, you know, when using that team, you just got to really hope that the Xerneas is slower than the Groudon and you can hit it before it does get its Geomancy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've, we've finished that game there. A nice little calculation at the end there. I know that that Groudon is, um, you know, just max speed, max special attack. My Xerneas is EV to um, two-hit KO Groudon with a Moonblast and Dazzling Gleam. So we saw just that exactly... A Dazzling Gleam and a Moonblast knocked it out, so um, nice little calculations going on there. Let's see what they're going to say then. Dash, then you can certainly survive the incoming fairy move. You can at least put it in range for Talonflame uh, and make it so your Rayquaza doesn't go down as easily as it did uh, in game one. However, since Kamal's, we saw it had Life Orb, so it doesn't have the Focus Sash, but still, it's a worthwhile trade, I think. Um, the Talonflame is better suited for dealing with the Xerneas after the Geomancy, so it might be better to trade your Rayquaza rather than Talonflame in this specific matchup. Yeah, the Talonflame was probably the thing that I was worried about most. Just because it's banded, um, I know that it would do a lot of damage to my Xerneas. It can potentially do a lot of damage to my Rayquaza as well, so I was a little bit worried about the Talonflame. Just one step closer to moving on to 4 0, Kamal, you know, going into game two. He's gonna have to react to this team. He's gonna be able. To, he's gonna have to be able to stop Xerneas from being able to set up that Geomancy. You know, again, like you mentioned, you know, that's one issue with the uh, special Groudon. I personally am not a fan, but you know, it, it yeah, it's does, one of it the reasons. The it's one of the reasons sometimes you do see mixed Groudon, so they carry that eruption, um, but then they also carry Precipice Blades just for situations exactly like we just saw in case they're up against a Xerneas with Geomancy. Yeah, I did play a few Groudon like that. Um, the the problem with Groudon like that though is that there we go is that um, if they sort of are compromising uh, some of their attack like the splitting into attack and special attack then especially after an intimidate it's not really going to be doing too much damage either so really the only uh, Groudon that my Xerneas really fears is just a pure physical one to be honest so you know and even then at minus one it's not going to be doing a massive amount to my Xerneas. See the, I see why Earth Power is desired because it can pick up a one-hit KO on Groudon, which Precipice Blades can't do. Uh, but at the same time, Xerneas is just so common. You're pretty much deciding, do you want to take out Xerneas or do you want to take out Groudon better? And we do see Kamala go ahead and lead with Groudon and Smeril again, as we do see Smeril and Xerneas leads out for Barry. So uh, Kamal trying to make this lead work as Barry just, you know, if it's not broken, why change it, right? Yep. We do see the Groudon now going to go ahead and revert back to its primal form over on Kamal's side, and... Yeah, so like like I was saying in the first game about going for the fake out on the Smurgle, not really being too worried if he goes for an eruption and knocks out my Smurgle, I'm pretty sure we are about to see that scenario right now, so let's see how this plays out. I mean, you have to go for Geomancy, there's just no reason not to at this point. Yeah, and you know, one issue that we saw in game one was Kamal protected his Groudon, so maybe he might have to do some sort of offensive maneuvers here with his Groudon. Yeah, the thing is, if Xerneas is faster, then even if Groudon does attack, uh, it's not going to be doing a whole lot of damage. Uh, you would at least be able to take out Smeargle if it goes for a fake out. And we do see Smeargle on Barry's side go for a fake out again onto that Smeargle on Kamal's side. Smeargle now going to flinch as Xerneas gets a Geomancy. Yeah, so the Sash is broken again. That's really important. It means I can knock out the Smeargle with one attack. He didn't protect his Groudon, so, you know, like I was saying, this is what how it would have played out in uh, in game one if he didn't protect his, his Groudon. Two stages of increased special attack, two stages of increased special defense, two stages of increased speed, as we do see Groudon now go for the eruption, gonna be able to pick the KO on Smeargle, and do some damage to that Xerneas at least, bring it down to about 60% of its health remaining. Yeah, so not bad damage there since the sunlight is up. Um, but if a Rayquaza were to come in here, for example, uh, then Groudon's damage output would be lower. And Rayquaza is very fast, so it would be able to take out the Groudon alongside the Xerneas being able to take out the Smeargle. Yeah, and now, you know, Rayquaza does come in just like he calls it. And what is Smeargle going to be able to do to provide some support for this Groudon here? Yeah, because 
Um, he didn't get like a speed boost or anything like that. Uh, I've got options in how I can knock that Smurgle out now, uh, which is really good for me. Uh, the Groudon doesn't really threaten either of my Pokemon aside from a hidden power ice on Rayquaza. My Rayquaza hasn't taken any chip damage this time. Um, so again, I'm not really too worried about that either. So the Groudon isn't really a threat, even though it's still at max HP. You know, these eruptions, you know, are going to be doing some damage, but I'm not that threatened. It's not going to knock out either of my Pokemon. So as long as I take care of the Smurgle, I'm all right. Because again, I don't want to leave it on the field. I don't want it to get any, you know, evasion boosts or speed boosts or anything nasty like that. Uh, there's follow me if it has it. Um, Wide Guard would block a Dazzling Gleam, but that doesn't really help too much because Rayquaza could still get an attack off. Um, we saw Groudon has that hidden power Ice. But at full HP, I can't see that KOing Rayquaza, even if it drops its special defense with Dragon Ascent. So Barry is in a very good position here. I'm not sure what Kamal can do with his Smeargle. Um, he can lessen the damage that his Groudon takes and keep it around longer if he goes for, say, a Follow Me or a Wide Guard. But he's just not in a good spot here. <laughs> we do see Rayquaza now. Mega Evolve going to go ahead and make the sunlight disappear and go for the mysterious air current instead because of that delta stream and it's really just going to come down to what Smeargle can do here or maybe if Kamal has something in the bag Xerneas goes for a dazzling, dazzling gleam right off the bat picks up the KO on Smeargle doing a good amount of damage to that Groudon here and now Rayquaza is going to get to move as Rayquaza goes for a Swords Dance. Going to go ahead and try to set up right now. Swords Dance is a very cool move on Rayquaza. It does exert a lot of pressure. As Groudon now goes for an Earth Power onto the Xerneas, maybe a critical hit might be able to do something here, but does not get the critical hit. And unfortunately, Xerneas is still around with enough health to survive another Earth Power, I believe. Yeah. Um, and this is one of the uh, things that I really like about this team. Uh, if you set Xerneas up, if you get Rayquaza in, then you've got a massive threat there with Xerneas. So you need to focus on that. But if you focus on that, then Rayquaza can set up itself. You know, it can sword stance. And now that is a massive threat. So that turn was a little bit cheeky. Um, I did predict it right, though, because in the first game, um, turn two, I went for the Moonblast on his Smurgle. I knew he had Wide Guard, so I just had an inkling that he would not go for Wide Guard this time, and I'd be able to get the Cheeky knockout onto the Smurgle and get some chip damage onto the Groudon as well, in case he did want to go for an Eruption. It also meant that uh, a plus two Dragon Ascent would definitely knock Groudon out. Plus two Dragon Ascent on No Bulk Groudon, I think, is like a, a, a role in... Uh, you know, vastly in favour of knocking it out, but I think it has got a really, really tiny chance of, of surviving too. But uh, just to get some more chip damage on the ground and would be, um, you know, beneficial as well. Um, getting the sword stance upon uh, on uh, Rayquaza as well is good. It means that I can really just knock out his Rayquaza in one hit as well. I have still got my Focus Sash too. My Xerneas has taken um, a bit of damage from the Earth Power, so I probably am in extreme speed range with a Life Orb now from his uh, Rayquaza. But because he had to focus on my Xerneas. I've got my Rayquaza set up now as well. So I'm feeling really happy. And again, like I was saying in game one, um, if uh, he didn't protect his Groudon like he didn't do here, he would have knocked my Smurgle out. I would have got a free switch into Rayquaza and I would have got the momentum that way as well. So, um, you know, really happy with how it's playing out. Yeah, I'm guessing Barry used that Swords Dance because he didn't think the Dragon Ascent would KO Groudon from this range. So it that's understandable there, I don't think. Uh, if he didn't expect it to KO. I didn't want the drops um, either. In which case, Swords Dance is perfectly fine because now Extreme Speed will be KOing everything. It can move before Talon Flame and just knock it out. Um, and then when he does attack Groudon eventually, he can knock that out. So, Barry, he's got two set up. Yeah, like, I, I was feeling really happy here because I was sure that, okay, I've got the Talon Flame covered. I've got a plus to Extreme Speed. It's going to knock the Talon Flame out. Xerneas is just going to be able to Moonblast into the Groudon and knock that out as well. So... Fully Let's set up happens. Pokemon, there's really not much Kamal can do here. And we see the extreme speed from Rayquaza come out. Connect oh. Talon, Talonflame survives! Talonflame now goes for the Brave Bird right here. Gonna go ahead and target down the Xerneas. Oh no, hits the Rayquaza instead, does not pick up the one hit KO. Talonflame faints from its own recoil right there. As we do. So that was a, that was really interesting actually. Um, I really expected the uh, plus two extreme speed to knock out Talonflame. Uh, Talonflame, like four HP, no bulk Talonflame, plus two extreme speed from my Rayquaza has got a 15 in 16 
uh, chance to one-shot it, basically. So I really thought I would knock it out there. Uh, the way he survived, it's obviously put some bulk on that talent flame, so he's maybe changed that a little bit. So, um, you know, that worked out really nicely. Uh, if he had had gone for the Brave Bird on my Xerneas there, I would have knocked it out, um, but I would have still had um, my Rayquaza, which would have survived an attack from the Groudon, and I'm almost certain I would have still won the game. I have still got a Pokemon in the back as well. You see now, Xerneas gets to go for a move, goes straight for a Moonblast right now, connecting onto that Groudon. Yeah. Is it going to be enough to pick up the one-hit KO? From there, it is enough to pick up the KO with the... Yeah, the, the critical hit didn't matter. Like I was saying, um, it is EV to take out Noble Groudon with a plus two Dazzling Gleam and Moonblast. So again, being, yeah, the cheeky turn when I expected him not to wide guard, getting that Dazzling Gleam damage off to the, uh, onto the Groudon allowed me to one-shot it with uh, Moonblast from there too, so... You know, knowing the calculations is uh, is key, really. Critical hit just to add insult to injury. And now Kamal has one more Pokemon to be able to knock out a setup Xerneas and a setup Rayquaza. Yeah, I don't know if there's a Pokemon that can do that, unfortunately, <laughs> for Kamal. Yeah, but that was Rayquaza definitely interesting to see that Talonflame uh, take that Swords Dance Extreme Speed from Rayquaza. Uh, it gave Kamal a chance. Maybe if he went for that Xerneas instead of the Rayquaza, uh, that would have given him an out, but he decided to target down the Rayquaza instead. Didn't pick up the knockout, uh, KO'd himself in recoil, and looks like we're going to see a 2-0 here for Barry. Kamal, though, still 3-1, so he's definitely got a good chance here at advancing to day two. Uh, he can't let those laws get to him. Barry is a, a great player, so no shame in losing to Barry. Um, he's still got to feel confident about his team. 3-1, uh, and one, you know, good score. Uh, he's about halfway through the day, maybe exactly. Yeah, um, that game worked out perfectly for me. Um, you know, just as, as I kind of expected, I suppose. Um, again, I, I had battled the that Japanese Nationals winning team on showdown quite a few times. I did know what the matchup was like. I was a little bit worried about the Rayquaza. Maybe if he led with his Rayquaza, that could have been something that he could have adjusted and, and uh, you know, worked uh, in favour for him. But, uh, yeah, I'm 4-0 now. So, um, you know, feeling really good with my run uh, so far. 4-0 on day one. Um, you just needed five wins, uh, no, six wins out of eight, and um, you were through to day two, so I just needed two more wins from here, and happy days, really. So, uh, thanks for watching this, guys. Uh, coming up tomorrow will be my next stream game. Uh, I'll be talking over that as well. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, you know, again, a team report is going to be coming up um, in a few days' time after I've done these stream games. So um, thanks a lot, guys. Please like and share, uh, you know, get my channel out there still growing and all the rest of it. So thanks a lot, guys. And goodbye for now.